good day friends it's dr tim and today we'll be discussing a very 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 interesting topic digestion of dietary carbohydrates it's a topic it's a biochemistry topic under carbohydrate metabolism and it's very simple so the video might be long but i want to just put everything about digestion of carbohydrates in just this one video all right so let's start what's digestion first of all digestion refers to the enzymatic hydrolysis of dietary carbohydrates or dietary substances from a larger form to a lesser form that can be absorbed i'll take it again when you talk about digestion what, what you mean is the enzymatic hydrolysis of dietary substances from a larger form to a smaller absorbable form so it's on the board already you can copy it down okay so enzymatic means that an enzyme is involved right that's straightforward the word hydrolysis means breakdown when, the, when you hear hydro it refers to water right like when you hydrate you're taking water so when you hear hydrolysis lysis means split up or breakdown so hydrolysis means that you're splitting up by using water i'll probably i'll probably show you that's how it's done you know on the board as we go by so it's the enzymatic enzymatic hydrolysis of dietary substances from a larger form to a smaller form that can be absorbed. Why? Because every food that you eat, every food substance you eat, you need it to be in a very simple form that can be taken into the bloodstream and circulated to the body tissues. Get the reason why you're eating, particularly for diet for carbohydrates, right? The reason why you take your carbohydrates is majorly because you need energy. You get you need energy, your all your organs and your tissues you require that you require that glucose and you know the, the carbohydrate substance, the nutrients. You get so it's, if it's not in the simplest form, it cannot circulate in the bloodstream. So when talking about digestion, it's how you break them down, and we use if you require enzymes to break them down. So that's what we're discussing today. So if you heard me clearly, I, I said dietary carbohydrates or dietary substances. So there are dietary lipids, there are dietary proteins, there are dietary carbohydrates. So what are the dietary carbohydrates? Are the major carbohydrates that you take in your diet? My too fast. Pardon me. So there are the major carbohydrates you take in your diet and the major ones include um your starch your glycogen your cellulose your sucrose and your lactose starch right starch like you can find starch in yam in cassava african countries right in in bread you get fine basically all plants store their carbohydrates in form of starch okay while animals start animals store their excuse me carbohydrates in form of what glycogen right so cellulose also is a dietary carbohydrate although we can't digest it but we need it for you know for our poop all right i'll explain more later so also we have sucrose sucrose is also called cane sugar by some authorities and then lactose lactose is also called milk milk sugar milk sugar milk sugar all right so when we talk about digestion you should know that for carbohydrates digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth begins in the mouth why because i said that digestion usually requires an enzyme from our definition an enzymatic hydrolysis right so the very first place where you find an enzyme that can digest a molecule you know or a food substance is in the mouth and that enzyme is called tylene tylene or salivary alpha amylase that's the you know fancy name by chemistry name salivary alpha amylase but the simple name is tylene we get so when in the mouth, in your saliva, there's something called saliva in your mouth, right? Obviously, everybody knows that. And the saliva contains an enzyme that can digest, specifically carbohydrates. So when they say that um, digestion of food begins in the mouth, take note that it's carbohydrates. Because enzymes are what specific in their action. So one enzyme for carbohydrates will not digest protein or lipids. Do you understand? So now, um, the enzymes that digest carbohydrates come are found in three places or come from three places there's one from the mouth right your saliva you get that salivary glands that secret saliva to the mouth and the saliva contains enzymes and enzyme that can digest carbohydrates so in the mouth then the next place would be um in the small intestine but in the small intestine coming from the pancreas there's an enzyme it's called pancreatic alpha amylase right that will secrete you know that will, that will digest carbohydrates and then also then there is um your intestinal mucosa can also secrete some enzymes that digest carbohydrates so let's not let's not rush it let's just take it step by step starting from the mouth right so let's just starting from the mouth the enzyme present in the mouth like i said earlier that can digest carbohydrates is what is salivary alpha amylase salivary alpha amylase the 
shortening is styling. Okay, so remember that enzymes always have a substrate. Okay, uh, enzymes always usually have a substrate. What well, that's what they act on. So, salivary amylase particularly act on starch or glycogen. Do you guess? So enzymes are what specific in their action. They, they don't. They do not just do anything or act on anything. Okay, this particular enzyme, salivary amylase, there's a particular bond, and this is an exam question. But in my school, the particular bond that this salivary amylase acts on is called alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond and you can it here alpha sorry my alpha looks very funny but alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond okay so when i start drawing structures you you should understand better but what i'm saying is that saliva alpha amylase is present in the mouth in the saliva and it acts specifically on alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond as is found in starch and glycogen all right glycosidic bond is the bond in all carbohydrates but 1,4 is the most specific name it's the most specific specific excuse me Specific bond, okay. All right, so um, enzyme, styling, substrates, starch, bond, alpha one form the product. So when um, I think I'll clean this. Excuse me. Okay. Now, what I tried indicating here um, is just a sketch of what a starch looks like. Remember that when if you were taught the, um, the chemistry of carbohydrates they will, they will tell you that there are monosaccharides that one sugar in it there are saccharides two sugar in it oligosaccharides that's few sugar in it oligo means few and there are polysaccharides carbohydrates with many sugar in it okay so now starch and glycogen are polysaccharides and to be more specific they are homo polysaccharides meaning that they are made up of the same sugar in it all through please don't get confused it's a very simple um concept now what i'm saying is that when you when you join two monosaccharides together mono means one di means two so when you join two monosaccharides together you have a disaccharide right and when you join like let's say three to ten um monosaccharides together you have an oligosaccharide that's just a few monosaccharide things together now when there are many so many it's now called polysaccharides so what I'm saying is that starch and glycogen are what polysaccharides and they are dietary carbohydrates. Please don't get confused. You can rewind if you don't understand. All right, it's too much at the same time. So what I'm saying is that when this enzyme present in the mouth acts on this bond that is found in starch, you have a couple of products. You have glucose, you have maltose, and you have oligosaccharides. Okay, so I'll just use schematic and explain so you don't get, you know, don't feel like it's too much. All right, this is a schematic for starch. Starch has a bond called um, alpha, a bond called alpha 1 for glycosidic bond, glycosidic bond. Okay? So, what I'm saying is that this enzyme, right, salivary amylase, it acts on this particular bond. So, this bond here is alpha 1 for 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 Poof, alpha 1 4. This one is a different bond it's called alpha 1 6. We'll talk about it um, soon. Alpha 1 6. So it can't act on this one. So if, pay attention now, if this enzyme, let me use red, if this enzyme, salivary alpha amylase, okay, um, thialine or salivary alpha amylase, thialine, this is thialine, if it's able to break this bond, right, each of these, each of these sugar units is glu represents glucose. This glucose, this glucose, this glucose, this glucose, 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 glucose. So starch is just um, plenty of glucose linked together. You get that's why I say polysaccharide. So my point is that if the enzyme called thialine in the mouth comes in contact with starch, it's going to break down the alpha one four glycosidic bond of starch. Now, every bond here li linking glucose together in this line of starch is an alpha one for glycosidic bond, right? So if this thialine goes and breaks this bond, okay, what would you have? You have this glucose being free. So you have what? One, you have a free glucose. Right? Not doing the full structure, just a schematic. Now, if this thialine was not able to break this guy, and he went on to break this guy. What you have? You have glucose linked with glucose. 
That means they attack right? called Maltos. And if this Tallinn guy just stopped his work here and he was not able to break the rest, the remaining bonds in this no starch, what you have now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What you have now is an oligosaccharide. Now you might be wondering why would why would an enzyme not be able to you know, break everything at once? It's simple. When when you put your food in your mouth, first of all, it's a very transient time that the food spends in the mouth. Okay? And there is something else called optimal pH that I forgot to mention, but it's on the board, thank you. Optimal pH. Optimal pH refers to the best pH for the, an enzyme to work. The best pH for an enzyme activity. The optimal pH of thialine is 6.8. But once you swallow your food and your food gets to your stomach, the stomach is very acidic. The pH of the stomach is between um, 1.0 to 2.5. So when it gets to the stomach, the thialine can no longer work. So meaning that whatever is left, it, it cannot, you know, it cannot hydrolyze further. Okay, so I'll just take it over again and then we'll move to the next place where digestion happens, okay? But what, what I just said is that in the mouth, when you get to the mouth, there's, there's saliva in your mouth and that saliva contains styline or salivary alpha amylase. Now, when salivary alpha amylase comes in contact with any food that contains starch, starch has a bond. Starch is a polysaccharide made up of plenty of glucose linked together by alpha one for like a acidic bond. So when, when you're tiling, Right, when your tiling comes in contact with this starch, it's going to go and attack this bond. Attack this bond. So to start to now break this bond, when it breaks this bond, you have what? A free glucose. This is a free glucose. Assuming it's not able to break this bond and it goes on to break this bond, you have what? A disaccharide called what? Maltose. And assuming that it was not able to break the remaining bonds. Okay, you want to now have now is an oligosaccharide. So that's why I said the product of the, the end product of you know, the action of this guy is what? Glucose, maltose, and oligosaccharides. I believe it's a very simple concept, so you don't don't get confused. Okay. So uh, so we can move on now. So the next place that we find an enzyme that, that, that can digest carbohydrates is from the pancreas. Let me the board now. So the next place that you can find enzymes that, are, that can digest carbohydrates, the next place that you can find enzymes that can digest carbohydrates is from the pancreas. So the pancreas has an endocrine function and an exocrine function, straight for another day. But what we are going to say, want to say is that when the food reaches, let me just make this sketch. Okay, let me just make this sketch. When the food reaches. When you've eaten the food and reaches your stomach, the next thing you enter is the small intestine. The first part of the small intestine is called the duodenum. Now, the pancreas is an organ that has some digestive functions because the pancreas has a duct that is connected to the small intestine. And when, when you eat your food, right, there is something called pancreatic juice from the pancreas secreted into the small intestine. Okay. Now, pancreatic juice contains some enzymes that can digest some stuff, some food substances. Now, there's an enzyme called pancreatic alpha amylase. It's similar to the one we had in the mouth that was salivary alpha amylase. The name just changed because of the location, because it's in the pancreas, or from the pancreas, it's called salivary, it's called pancreatic alpha amylase. So, pancreatic alpha amylase acts on Starch and glycogen, similar to salivary alpha amylase, because they are basically the same same kind of enzymes, just that are in different from different places. Do you understand? So salivary pancreatic alpha amylase acts on starch and glycogen, but not just that, it also acts on oligosaccharides and also on maltose. Why? Because in my this in the sketch I drew earlier, um, oligosaccharides, you can have oligosaccharides because Salivary family does not do 100% of the work. So typically, it said that salivary family does does um, 20 to 40% of the digestion of starch and glycogen. So the remaining, um, the remaining, the, the full job is now, the, the other part of the job is now done by pancreatic alpha amylase. Okay, so pancreatic alpha amylase 
um, bond act on this bond, the same bond, right? Alpha one four glycosidic bond. Okay, so if we ask which bond does pancreatic alpha amylase act on, alpha one four, just like salivary alpha amylase. Okay, so um, it's all it has on standard glycogens, also has on oligosaccharides and maltose. Okay, so it will produce glucose, maltose, and limit dextrin. What's limit dextrin? Um, okay, let me show you that. Okay, remember this is our sketch. So, remember that if, if this is your starch and it was broken down, you have free glucose, it was broken down, you have maltose, what is left is oligosaccharide. So this oligosaccharide now, when it gets to the small intestine, there will be a pancreatic juice released and that juice contains pancreatic alpha amylase. Pancreatic alpha amylase can now further hydrolyze this, hydrolyze this, hydrolyze this, hydrolyze this. Well, it can't hydrolyze this. Why? Because we all you know that these bonds here are alpha 1, 4, 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 alpha 1, 4. But this bond here is alpha 1, 6. Okay, this bond, they get their name from um, glucose structure. Remember, when your name, not bring your glucose, you start from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then there'll be a 6 up here. So this one will be what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there'll be a 6 up here. Because this is between, the bond is between 1 and 4. Sorry, the marker is not so clear. Because the bond is between 1 and 4, that's why you have alpha 1, 4, alpha 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 4. But this guy here, this is 6, this is 1. So it's alpha 1, 6, like a acidic bond. So enzymes are specific in their action. So this guy called Sala M, pancreatic alpha amylase, cannot act on 1, 6. So if you have 1, 6 like that, it's called a limit dextrin. Sorry about the plain sound. Alright. So um, that's. That's basically what you have for digestion of carbohydrates at, by the pancreas, okay? So the next thing that happens is that apart from pancreatic juice, there's something called it's intestinal juice, okay? So intestinal juice is secreted by the cells of the small intestine. The small the cells of the small intestine are actually called enterocytes. So when you hear the, the term ENT, ENT, first the intestine, right? Enterocytes, intestinal cells, right? Enteric intestinal something something you get so so last lastly now we'll talk about um the action of intestinal juice on carbohydrates
Okay. All right. So lastly, the what's left of carbohydrate digestion is uh, the activity that will be done by intestinal juice. So we have remember we have we had um, saliva coming from you can call it salivary juice if you will saliva coming from the salivary glands to the mouth. Okay. Saliva contains other things you get, but of particular for the discourse of the it contains thialine and enzyme that digest carbohydrates. And when you go to the small intestine, the pancreas has a duct that is connected to the small intestine. So there'll be a pancreatic juice to the small intestine. And pancreatic juice contains a couple of stuff, but one thing that it contains that pertains to this topic is pancreatic alpha analyse that can digest carbohydrates. We, we know what you, it, will, it will result to. Now, the next thing is that there is something called intestinal juice as well by the cells of the intestine. Cells of the intestine are called what? Enterocytes, right? So, enterocytes, they will secrete intestinal juice. And intestinal juice contains plenty of enzymes, actually. Remember when we said that, that the major um, dietary carbohydrates were starch, glycogen, you mentioned sucrose, we mentioned lactose and we mentioned cellulose. That last one cannot be digested by, by us because we don't have cellulose in beta, you know, glycosidase. Okay, so, but we didn't talk about um, fruit sucrose and lactose, so we'll talk about it now. So, first of all, maltose, there will be an enzyme from the, in the intestinal juice called maltase. Now, note that enzymes end with um, A's, usually end with A's, or always end with A's. A, A's like A S E. While sugars end with O's, right? So, get. So now, maltase is one of the contents of intestinal juice. Maltase would break down maltose to give you glucose plus glucose. Take notes. In my school, this would be in a possible exam questions. Yeah. So, mal maltase would break down. Maltase is found in the intestinal ju in the intestinal juice, right? To break down maltose to give you glucose and glucose, right? So sucrose, um, sucrose is another enzyme to break down sucrose to fructose and glucose. Okay, lactase is another enzyme that will break down lactose to glucose and galactose. And then when we talk about limits dextrin, that guy that has that extra bond, right, of uh, one six. So it can only be broken by something called a dextrinase into a certain number of glucose units. Okay, and glucose units. So this one is also called out isomaltase. A possible exam question if you are in my school or the school I went to. Right? So uh, that's pretty much it for carbohydrate digestion. But that's all. There's something if normally, right, normally the most abundant after the whole breakdown of carbohydrates, okay, into different monosaccharides, the most abundant of them is glucose about 80 percent about 80 percent of what you have after your dome is um digesting carbohydrates is glucose and about 10 percent of what you have is fructose and um, galactose and galactose and about 10 percent is the other monosaccharides other monosacs sorry about my crabbing and writing okay so and then something else um Normally, you, your body will not absorb, okay, your body will not absorb um, disaccharides. So your body tries to break down everything to monosaccharides, okay. This is with respect to carbohydrates, okay. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. So that's, that's basically it, okay. That's basically, if you have any questions, you can drop um, in the comment section. If you like I should explain something better, I will. Particularly, I would like to explain the different video, the difference between hydrolysis and condensation. So watch out for that. Okay, but just an overview of what we say. We say that for carbohydrates, digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth because there's an enzyme in the mouth that can digest carbohydrates, right? So in the mouth, it's called salivary families or thialine. Okay, then when it gets to when it gets to the stomach, the thialine activity stops. Okay, so um, the next thing that you can find an enzyme that can digest carbohydrates is from the pancreas. There's something called pancreatic juice that we release into the intestine, the duodenum particularly. And pancreatic juice contains other stuff, but particularly it contains pancreatic families that can digest some carbohydrates, starch and glycogen. Right? Then the last, last, lastly, we have intestinal juice from the intestinal cells called enterocytes that can act, that can act on 
you know car buys as well so just replay the video take down notes and if you have any questions you can drop in the comment section and i will explain but better oh i don't need better okay so that's that's it just like this video you can share with your friends subscribe to the youtube channel drop plenty of comments turn on the, the notification button notification plenty of mistakes in one video right well oh, that that's pretty much it. i think i'll just stop here i'll see the lot um i'm talking all right love you guys Oh, my.